Watson Estate has begun its regenerative journey with a new cultivation strategy and compost creation at the heart of its new system. However, the team is looking more widely to further innovate their strategy. Wild Farmed is a company leading the way in regenerative agriculture and working with farmers like Nick Padwick, who has implemented new regenerative practices on the farm he manages. I'm the estate manager at Kenhill Farms and Estates, and as part of my responsibilities, I also manage and look after Kingsland Farm, which is part of the Waterston Estate. The Ken Hill Estate in North Norfolk is experimenting with several innovative regenerative practices. Nick believes that the microbiology within compost holds the key to improving soils, and for the last two years has been experimenting with making and applying compost. Synthetic inputs here at Ken Hill, we're on a journey to remove them totally from our farming system. We're now year three, and as we start to increase the amount of compost we're putting in on using, we're reducing and have reduced the amount of nitrates that we're putting on. We are now two years down the road from not using any nitrate fertilizers. After making his compost, Nick lays it out into long two meter wide rows and uses a specialist machine to mix it together and add water. Once matured, the compost is tested for microbial activity and then applied direct to the soil with a muck spreader at a rate of five tonnes per hectare. Nick is also trialling liquid compost extracts that could be particularly effective for farms with a smaller supply of solid compost available. Compost extract is us taking a compost that is biocomplete, and biocomplete means it has all the right levels of fungi, bacteria, protozoa, microarthropods within it, and then we take that physical compost and we're going to put it into a liquid. So the reason behind us doing all of this is to put all these missing microbes that our current farming system has depleted. So the ploughing, the cultivating, the use of synthetic inputs has degraded and uh, destroyed all of these fundamental elements within the soil. So we apply both solids and liquids and we find having both of them works really well for us. We need a small quantity of compost to produce quite a large quantity of liquid. So we need probably 20 kilos of compost to put on four hectares of land. To do the same with physical compost, we're putting that on at five tonnes a hectare. So we would need quite, quite a lot more compost. To make the compost extract, Nick first adds five to 10 kilos of matured compost to a 400 micron bag. Before the bag is added to the tea extractor, he secures it to the lidded aerator and seals it. The tea extractor is filled with water and the compost mix added. When we get to a certain stage, so probably about half an hour, we can take a sample of the water. We can put it under a microscope. Once we've done that, we can then start looking at how many nematodes, microarthropods, different types of protozoa, fungal hyphae we have in our water. And then at that point, we can then apply that to the soil. Nick is not only pushing regenerative strategies at Ken Hill. Back in 2023, he also worked with Wild Farmed on the Wadston Estates farm in Cambridgeshire. So I see it that Waddeston are on that regen journey, uh, but we maybe are a few steps ahead of them currently, um, where we're utilising our stewardship scheme and it fits in nicely with our, our link with Wild Farmed. And I think over time, they'll adopt those practices at Waddeston once we actually get an idea of the results and the progress of what we're doing here at Kingsland. One of the main initiatives at Kingsland is an experimental cropping system. One of the things we're doing here is a, a pasture cropping system where we're taking herbage lays, so it could be clover, plantain, shepherd's parsley, and we're drilling them in strips, 50 centimetre strips, and then we're growing crops in between them. So this is our uh, strip till mower and we've had this for about two years now and some of the systems that we're operating for our regen 
and farming system is that we're, we're growing wheat in between rows of herbage lay, which sounds great, but how do you manage the herbal lay when you've got wheat growing in between it? Someone came up with this amazing idea of putting like lots of little lawn mowers on this central beam. So we've got a row of herbage lay here, and then in between each of the mowers is where we grow our cereal crops. And if we move this little curtain and these chains stop anything coming out, under here, we've got a circle disc with blades on it. And those blades spin really, really quickly and cut the herbage lay. So the benefit of that is that we are able to control that herbage lay and allow the wheat or the cereal crops to grow above it. So there's never been anything like this before within the farming system. And technology has enabled us to start really thinking wider uh, and we can now adopt uh, pieces of machinery like this because of satellite guidance, you know, the accuracy that we are driving, you know, two centimetres, it's just insane. And certainly in my journey within agriculture, we've seen tractors with no satellites where we were steering them all the time. Satellites now are just so amazing. So over the next five or 10 years, I think technology is gonna, gonna change and adapt. Of course it is, it always does. Uh, and I think things like this is just the start of many, many opportunities we see for uh, planting. So the way we plant our cereal crops, whether it's planting, going away from the monocultures and we can actually plant five or six different seeds at the same time in one pass. The technology side will adapt and will change and can only benefit what we're doing as a regen farmers. So here we're seeing now the final stages. We're literally days away from harvest uh, once this rain stops going through and we've got five or six different varieties in this field within the strip till system. We've got a few thistles poking their heads up. It's due really to the to the wet we've had this year. We've used our mower several times to just reduce that herbage lay um, but you know for no inputs I think this looks a fantastic stand of wheat. At the end of every harvest, obviously we take time to stand back and review where we currently are. And we may tweak certain things, but these herbage lays are in for sort of three or four, five years. So we don't want to keep on swapping them out and changing us. We'll never actually get any really good data as to, to what we're seeing. The rotation will change, of course it will. The lays, the herbage lays, will they change? Well, no, they're going to kind of stay where, the way they are. Um, and we'll just hopefully start monitoring and looking at the results from all our soil testing that we're doing to find out whether our soil succession is changing to get to the point where we can grow cereal crops. Once we change that and we start introducing the compost and the extracts, we'll hopefully see that levelling up as we get more microbes in our soils. It's up to all of us now to, to really seriously think about uh, how we want to uh, look after our soils and maybe to start to um, put those microbes back into, uh, into the soils.